Hello, my name is Darren Thomas, and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at permutations and the multiplication principle. So let's go ahead and get started. So when we're talking about permu permutations, we're talking about the ordering of objects. There's a limit to how many different ways you can order something and that's kind of what this rule explores or this, this ideal permutation explores. And again, it's very difficult to talk about this on an abstract level, so it's better to look at it at an example. So let's say you have four letters, A, B, C, and D. And you want to take three of these. So take three of these numbers and figure out how many different ways you can arrange them. Now, in order to have success with this, you want to just draw some basic uh, of, uh, shapes and things to try to get you started. Again, it's, it's hard to talk about this. It's better to see it. So if I want to try to make this as clear as possible, I would do the following. So I'm going to take three of the letters. In other words, I'm not going to use all four letters in my answer. All four letters are available, but only three are used at a time. So this means that I need to have three spaces that I'm going to multiply by. Multiply by. And again, if you're familiar with the multiplication principle, you know that this is one way you find out the possible uh, order of, of or number of options that you might have. So it's kind of like I'm going to a restaurant and there's four choices and I'm going to order three of them, if you recall from previous videos. So in the first slot, I'm going to have four different letters that I could choose from because all four are available. After that, I'm going to take a letter here, and so the next time through, only three letters are going to be available left. And then after that, I've already used up two letters, so there's only going to be two letters left. And so by looking at it like this, four times three times two, you are able to get the answer, which in our case is going to be 24. And so you can see this. So I might pick A here. If I pick A, A is no longer available. So then I can pick B, C, or D. So, so I can pick, oh, let me back up. A, B, C, or D, I can pick here. But if I pick A, B, and C, and D are left. And if I pick B, only C and D are left. And so you can see this is kind of how it works out, and you're able to get the answer in a very efficient manner. Now, let's go to another example that's a little bit different. So imagine you have a family, and they're lining up to get some food. So, you know, this is a, a traditional, stereotypical family. So you're going to have a father, you're going to have a mother, and you're going to have children. So we'll just say, you know, boy one, you know, boy two, and of course they have a, a little baby girl. So we have five people here. We have a father, a mother, two boys, and a girl. And so we need to figure out how many different ways can they line up, for example, to go on a roller coaster or to go into a restaurant, whatever. And so again, the key answer is, well, how many choices do I have? How many options? I have five options. That means I'm going to need five little spaces here. One times, 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 one, two, three, four, and that's five. And so I'm going to start with my total number of people. So I got, let's see here, five people. So the first time through, anybody can be in the top spot. So five. After that, one of these people will not be available. So I'll be left with four. And then after that, two people will not be available, so I'll be left with three. And then after that, three people will not be available, so I'll be left with two. And then, of course, one. You don't have to put the one, but it just completes the thought here. So five times four is 20. 20 times three is 60. 60 times two is going to give us 120. We don't have to multiply it by one. That's how that works. And so you can see it's not that deep. Now, what if I change the rule here and said, look, Everybody's not going to line up. Only three people are going to line up. So how many different ways can we do that? Well, again, it's not going to be that deep. You're going to start with your five, four, and three. You're going to stop at three. You're going to cross that off because we don't need that anymore. So five times four is 20. 20 times three is going to be 60 this time. So if we only take three people, so it might be the father, the mother, and the, and the little girl. So that means that the brothers are sitting at the table maybe. You can see that we have these uh, these choices, but again, I can pull the brothers and, and leave the little girl, or I can pull the father and, and leave the mother, whatever. It's going to be five times four times three. That's kind of how that works. And now just to do one more to try to make it a little bit more interesting, 
What if we say the father has to go first? So now the father, he must be the first person in line and then the rest of the people we don't care about. Again, this will be slightly different. I'll write it out for you real quick. So here are my choices. So we're gonna one times that, times that, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then five like that. So the father, he has to go first. So we're gonna put a one in the first spot because that's the father. In other words, nobody else can be there but the father, so one. And so after he's gone, we still have four choices, the mother, the two boys, and the girl. So we'll put these guys here, and then after one of them takes this spot, there'll be three people left, and then after that, there'll be two people left, and lastly, there'll be one person left. And so if we do four times three times two, we're gonna get 24, 24 times one is 24. We have 24 permutations, 24 different ways that we can order this, this uh, particular family of five if the father goes first. If the order does not matter, it'll be 120 different ways. It doesn't matter who goes first, and if we only take three people, it'll be 60. That's kind of how this works. So again, this is just a basic multiplication, not necessarily that deep, but a different way of looking at things. So let's review what we talked about and conclude this video. So in this video, we looked at permutations and the multiplication principle. And so basically, whenever you are trying to take more than one option, you have to multiply. We learned that in a prior video. And in this video, we use the multiplication principle to figure out how we can order objects. And when we're talking about the order of objects, we're talking about permutations. And so in this first example, we had four choices, but we're only going to take three of those. And so by using our, our knowledge of the multiplication principle, we found out that there are 24 different ways we can order things. In this next one, we had a, an example of a family of five, a father, a mother, two boys, and a girl. And so first we wanted to see, well, how many different options are there? Five times four times three times two times one. Got us 120. All right, that's great. Well, what if we only could take three people? There's five people available, but we only take three at a time. Five times four times three, that gave us 60. And then of course, what if the father had to be first? And so if the father's first, he's gonna be in that, that far left corner, and then it's four times three times two, and then that's how we get our answer. So. My name is Darren Thomas. Um, I, hope, uh, I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you for watching. Take care.